Okay, everyone, welcome. It is 11 a.m. East Coast, 8, 8 a.m. on the Pacific, and welcome to our uh, Sunset Day Google Plus Hangout on Air. This is our first Hangout on Air, that uh, we'll be having a few Hangouts coming up in the coming days. The first one here being the meteorology behind sunsets. And we have a great panel here, a great panel of meteorologists from the Weather Channel and local uh, TV Mets from, from across the country, from the West Coast to the East Coast, that are going to talk about weather and its relationship to sunset viewing. So um, I think you're going to learn a few things. I learned a few things because I had to study up on this. <laughs> and, uh, and, and not only that, but uh, you might already know some of those other things. Um, that you, you know. But as a, I think you're gonna, uh, it's going to be a really cool show. And um, I do want to talk about first, before we talk about our, our awesome uh, panel, what Sunset Day is. Sunset Day is taking place on September 19th. We are partnering with Google Plus and Google Plus Photos page. And on the 19th of September, we're asking everyone to, uh, to upload your, your, your sunset photo and tag it with the hashtag Sunset Day. Uh, ideally, we'd love to, for you to take that photo on September 19th itself. However, we're aware that some days are going to be overcast. And um, so if there's some days maybe leading up to the 19th, you can take that photo and uh, prepare your shot and then upload on the 19th. And by the way, speaking of um, this Google, um, Google Plus event, those uploads will be open to the public on the 19th. So until then, it will be closed, uh, just to let you know. All right, so everyone, um, Get ready. We're going to be learning some heavy, some heavy meteorology, maybe even some physics, really. And uh, so we have a great panel to discuss. And uh, I think we're going to go. I'm not sure how it goes left to right, right to left. But Brad Panovich, I'm going to start with you. Uh, state your name, who you represent, and maybe some of your uh, social um, handles that you have. Okay. Um, I am uh, Brad Panovich. I'm the chief meteorologist here at NBC Charlotte in North Carolina. Um, uh, I'm, a, I'm on social media a little bit, so if you look me up on uh, <laughs> WX Brad on Twitter, uh, Facebook Brad Panovich, uh, Google Plus Brad Panovich, Instagram. Uh, if there's a social network, I'm usually on it somewhere out there. Um, but I, I've been the chief meteorologist here in Charlotte now for about eight years by way of New Orleans, Traverse City, Michigan, and Dayton, Ohio. Uh, Jacob, we'll go with you. All right. My name is Jacob Wyckoff. I am a meteorologist at Weatherbug. Um, you can find me at, at forecast for you uh, on Twitter, uh, also Jacob Wyckoff on Google+, and meteorologist Jacob Wyckoff on Facebook. Um, I am a graduate of Western Connecticut State University. Most people have never heard of it, and frankly, when I was looking for schools, I hadn't either. Um, so it's a small program, but hopefully uh, I'm doing them proud. Um, so that's, that's a little bit about me. I do kind of dabble in the TV world. I have worked with... Uh, with Morgan Palmer, you'll meet him in a second at some TV stations, and I work with TV Mets all across the country. Thanks, Jacob. John? Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Jonathan Erdman. I'm Senior Meteorologist at the, the Weather Channel, weather.com, uh, specifically on the digital side. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at WXJ Erdman. Um, do a lot of social media, and frankly, one of my favorite parts of the job is scouring through our eyewitness photos, and specifically sunsets. So, I'm really looking forward to chatting sunsets with everybody, um, and uh, yeah, that's that's basically it. Uh, again, I've been doing this for about uh, 15 years as a meteorologist, so uh, again, I love looking at the weather charts, but I also look, love looking at the uh, photos that uh, that uh, the folks sent us. So again, um, enjoying this uh, Google chat. Thanks, John. Maria. Good morning. My name is Maria LaRosa. I'm a meteorologist at the Weather Channel, and I've been at the Weather Channel for about three years. I'm a Penn State grad of the Meteo program there. I'm a huge fan of beautiful photography. Uh, my dad gave me my first camera in high school, and I've been kind of hooked ever since, although I'm not really, really into it enough to call me any kind of uh, real photographer, but I um, love great sunset and sunrise photographs. I'm out here all the time trying to grab that perfect shot of the colors that we get. So I'm excited to be part of this chat and learn a little bit myself. Thanks, Maria. Mike Bettis. Hola, good morning. Um, Co-host of Morning Rush with Maria La Rosa uh, on the Weather Channel. Um, proud Ohio State alum. Right, Brad? Go Bucks. And um, and got to say, I'm more of a sunrise than a sunset guy. Um, <laughs> But that's okay. Um, I'm looking forward to the hangout and talking about uh, how it all comes together. Thanks, Mike. Morgan. 
Hey there, I'm Morgan Palmer, meteorologist at uh, Cairo 7 Eyewitness News, that's K-I-R-O in Seattle, uh, the CBS station. I've been fortunate enough in my career to live in two beautiful places. Before I came to Seattle, I lived in Fort Myers, Florida, so I got my share of sunrises and especially sunsets, and uh, I look forward to the, um, to, the, to the group this morning. Mississippi State University for Meteorology, and uh, before my career in Florida and Seattle, I was in Tyler, Texas for about a decade, also a beautiful neck of the woods. Thanks, Morgan. Tim Bryce. Hey, uh, I'm Tim Bryce. I'm a forecaster with the National Weather Service in El Paso, Texas. I've been here in El Paso for 19 years, and we have great sunsets out here. Um, working shift work, I get actually paid to go out and record, sunri look at sunrises and sunsets. So it's a, it's a great job, and I really enjoy doing it. Um, you can find me on Twitter at TimBryce17, and all my social media handles at about.me slash TimBryce. That's easy. Everything in one little compartment. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I forgot if I introduced myself. My name is Tim Bowsey. I'm a social meteorologist for the Weather Channel. You can find me on Twitter at Irish Eagle. Um, I do want to let everybody know the audience that is watching us right now. We have uh, we are using the cool uh, new app that Google Plus is providing. It's called the Questions app. Um, I think it's sort of self-explanatory. You put out the questions, and we'll try to answer them as best we can. And uh, hopefully, we'll get some from the audience in the in the coming minutes. All right, so um, I'm going to start off with sort of the elephant in the room, and that is hurricane season. Yes, can you believe that we're actually <laughs> we're actually able to have this hangout on September 9th, and and that just just blows my mind because I think uh, many of us would be very very busy on any other season or any other year, and uh, we're just you know we're thankful and, and we're grateful that it's been a very slow hurricane season. And then we're actually able to have a, a hangout about sunsets and not the nefarious <laughs> hurricanes. I think that's uh, I think it's pretty cool. I don't know if anybody want to hit on that, or we should just get, go right into the sunset talk. <laughs> it's just amazing. When I lived in Florida in Fort Myers, it was uh, obviously top of mind. So I, I think they're there in Fort Myers and the rest of Florida sort of twiddling their thumbs, wondering when it's going to snap back. Yeah. At some point, and at some point it will. Some point, maybe maybe 2014. <laughs> it could be, it could be a big fat goose egg so far. Right. And uh, Morgan, I do want to at the very end, our, when we talk about our favorite sunsets, since you have such a cool perspective on the Florida sunset and the Seattle sunset, I think that's kind of cool to talk about sort of the landscape. And but um, so let's, um, I guess we should just get right into it. And uh, I don't know, it's just sort of a free for all, but uh, <laughs> and uh, you guys can jump in. But basically, when it comes to, you know, when I was digging into this information, um, I, I thought to myself, you know what, this is actually more than just meteorology. This is just some hardcore physics that goes, yeah. into, mm -hmm. that goes into sunsets. And uh, I definitely had to do uh, some studying up myself to get back to some of my physics courses from high school to college. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually have some old school books too. Um, but it, it actually helped me out. But does anybody want to talk about why the difference in the sun color from directly overhead at the zenith <laughs> Or is that the right, the zenith? And then, and then, of course, at the horizon. And what's going on there? Why is there different colors perceived to our eyes from directly overhead to at the horizon? Anybody want to take that one? Any takers? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, basically, it, it comes down to, if you want to get the technical term, it's that Rayleigh scattering. And I think if I can show my screen here, I can... Uh, show you a quick little image here. Basically, the, the atmosphere, uh, the little oxygen and nitrogen molecules in the atmosphere tend to scatter out the shorter wavelengths. So as it passes through, as the sunlight, which is white, uh, passes through that atmosphere, the, when at sunset, as it's passing through more of the atmosphere, more of those uh, blues and the greens get scattered out. And what you're left with there, as you can kind of see in the image, are the oranges and the reds. So that's why as it passes through more of that atmosphere uh, at sunset and at sunrise, you get more of those uh, blues or more of those reds and yellows showing up. Yeah, Tim, it's, it's funny because, like, the number one question I get when I do my school talks from kids is, first of all, why is the sky blue? Yeah. And, and, you, and you really you start yep. to get into, you know, how this happens, you know, how the, the light coming directly from above tends to scatter more of the violet, actually, and our eyes kind of perceive it more as blue, but in reality, it would be pure violet if our eyes didn't adjust and see blue a little bit better. But you, you mentioned, you know, through the horizon, 
you get more you know more sunlight through the atmosphere. And a lot of times, I don't think people think about the atmosphere as like this thickness, this physical thing. They just think it's like invisible. And oftentimes, when that sun gets so low in the horizon, people forget how far a distance the sunlight has to travel through yeah. the atmosphere to reach your eye. And, uh, I got into this with an astronomy group one time about why certain times of year and certain weather phenomena it was easier to see stars and planets and we'd always tell them you know the best way to see it is through the thinnest part of the atmosphere which is straight up when things are low on the horizon you get those cool colored moons as well which have a huge impact not only on the sun set and sunrises but actually the color of the moon when you get those low uh, low sunrise or moon rises and moon sets exactly no it's uh, anybody else want to hit on that yeah Tim. when I was doing research uh, Tim as well um, I think, Brad, you said it has to travel thousands of miles, and, and that's that's pretty incredible. So <laughs> as as the sun is, is setting, like I'm in Maryland right now, you could think that, you know, the sun is now over St. Louis, and that's how far the sunlight travels to get to where I am. So it, it's pretty incredible, and that's, again, where you get all those crazy colors. Yeah, John. John, do you want to jump in? Well, we've seen some interesting things over the last couple of weeks due to all the uh, wildfires uh, mm -hmm. out in the uh, yep. Rockies. Uh, we've seen all these smoke plumes traveling uh, to the east in parts of the Plain States, and that's produced some spectacular sunsets. Yep. And I've always been fascinated with how smoke and smoke particles uh, create some of the most brilliant red sunsets. And that's just because those smoke particles are actually yep. jumping into the party and helping <laughs> to uh, deflect some of that solar radiation filter that out, so we just have really red sunsets in parts of the upper Midwest and plains over the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Oops. Hold on one second, Maria. Let me get the mic going here. Go ahead. <laughs> no? No? <laughs> I don't know. I think we're still... She's never sounded better. So. <laughs> oh, 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 wow. I'm going to pay for that tomorrow. Oh, right? already, already. Of course I am. Maria, check your upper right. See if uh, the mic is... Uh... Tell you what, I'll take it here for yeah. just a second while sure. the mic's getting uh, fixed there. Something Going off something that Brad mentioned a few moments ago about uh, questions from school kids about why is the sky blue... Well, I've received a question back from kids from time to time. Why is the sky on Mars red? Because everyone saw the pictures from the Mars landers, Pathfinder, gosh, I think that was the first one, maybe Viking, I don't recall, back in the 70s, and then most recently the rovers that we have over there. And it's the same sort of phenomenon that you were describing about there simply being more pollution in the atmosphere, so it's also being scattered, but as well the soil of Mars is red and so much of that has been kicked up in the air. I wonder if, if we had no wind on Mars and the soil of Mars were stuck to the surface, what color would the sky be? I think it might be a real dark shade of blue perhaps? I don't know. That's a good question. I would, I would think that with the atmosphere being so thin that you would have yeah. very little color, like a, almost a black or if there would be a color, it would be real dark, dark blue. Right. I would agree. And you kind of notice that when you're flying on an aircraft, if you can poke your head out, not out the window, that would be bad, uh, or right at the window and look straight up, it, it's a very dark blue compared to what we see on the ground. And yeah. what, uh, what, are, what are you, five, six miles up? Yeah. Yeah, I know that um, they, they say that, you know, we're getting ready to see this space tourism thing take off, and they said that, you know, the, the ones that take off and go, you know, 100 miles up, that they go actually out to where there is, uh, the atmosphere is, is so so thin that it actually turns black, and it's a it's practically being in space. So yeah, as you get higher up, as that atmosphere gets thinner and thinner, you lose that blue color. Very interesting, Marie. Did you? I think you're back on. Are you there? I don't. I don't think so. Can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. Oh, okay. Um, it still says I'm muted, but I'll just go for it. I was just yes. gonna. I'm just gonna say that you know it's interesting how things that are just really gross during the day. I blame the cicadas. Yes. <laughs> so we got you, and then all of a sudden it went mute again. I'm sorry. I apologize, Maria. Um, okay. Okay, now we got you again. But, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's showing that it's mute. Ooh. There must all be right. a small delay. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of interesting. Well, I, so, think uh, that, I think that it's interesting, you know, guys, when you talk about 
you know, the atmospheric conditions that create these sunsets, but also, you know, what, what Earth's contribution to that is, well, whether you have snow cover on the ground or whether you have, maybe you're looking at a sunset over a body of water or you're looking, you know, I've, you know, one of the most vivid and beautiful sunset ever, sunset ever saw was when I was uh, skydiving at sunset over the Smoky Mountains. Wow. You know, and they have a they have a pollution problem there with the Smokies, and it's just it was completely different color from 12,000 feet down to the surface. <laughs> and I just thought, man, there's a lot going on here, and this is this is a pretty cool experience, you know. Very cool. Yeah, I think I was reading up on, the, you know, when it comes to sunsets across the ocean. That they they're red, uh, and this is I'm going to throw this question out there, but, uh, but when it comes to the you know the, the the droplets of rain kind of just off the ocean surface, that it's those droplets that help to scatter mostly that that red wavelength the most. I'm not sure if that's true, but that's sort of the things that I've been reading up on, and uh, just you know gives it that brilliant red sunshine. John, going back to your talking about the smoke, did you find out in any of your uh, you know, studying or just through the years, what what type of particles make what type of colors? Is there any relationship that we can get out of that? Or, well, it's, it's generally uh, with a smoky sunset, you'll get that deep, deep red. Um, right, right. There's a preferential. You know, most sunsets will tend to let, of course, the yellows and the oranges and the reds kind of scatter out. Or, sorry, to actually come through and scatter out the other uh, lower energy radiation. But it's those smoke particles that will tend to also filter in the yellow, filter out the yellows, and then what you're left with is just those brilliant red sunsets. And uh, again, it was interesting to follow social media over you know, over the last couple of weeks and see some of those brilliant uh, sunsets, even coming from places like Iowa and Minnesota and the eastern Dakotas. You know, a good hundreds of miles away from where these fires were burning. So, uh, yeah, they're they're by far and away my favorite sunsets. Last year up here in Seattle, we had some beautiful sunsets uh, for weeks on end, and it was related to fires in Russia, in Siberia, and of course that smoke just came right across the Pacific, not being filtered out by anything, and it came across in a hurry, so wow. I told people, look up, that smoke, the beautiful red <laughs> sunset, you can blame it on Russia, we had those <laughs> fires there last year. Well, I, I'm sure you dealt with this, Morgan, in Florida with some of the Saharan air layer coming across yeah. the Atlantic. Right. You get some beautiful sunsets with that dust from Africa coming across. And I think being on the water, is, is uh, as Tim was alluding to, is kind of important, not just because of, you know, what's going on in the atmosphere, but just your point of view. I think often, you know, one of the things you don't think about is what is your perspective, being on a mountaintop, being um, in a wide open horizon, like on a body of water or field in Iowa or Nebraska, where you have, you know, unlimited visibility of the, of the horizon, that can play a big part uh, in how cool the sunsets look. I know when I go to the beach quite a bit, I'm always flabbergasted how great the sunsets look, because I just have such a great view, and I can see the, the solar disk as it goes all the way to the horizon. I just can't see it here in Charlotte because of the hills and the trees. I was just going to say I'm a land lover myself. It's just I'm, I'm just there's many times that I'm I just find myself in the interior, <laughs> and right. and and you really when you're when you're here you have so many obstacles to overcome. Be it in the city, you're in the skyscrapers or tall buildings here. I'm uh, by the way, everyone. I'm here in Western North Carolina, and we're here in the mountains, a lot of forests, and of course the hills and the mountains. And the, so you got to climb. You got to get in. The, you got to get some elevation in order to see some decent sunsets here. Um, but then, of course, when you get to the coast or when you get into the high, when you get you gain elevations and you're in the mountains, you get some really awesome sunsets. And I, I think that's what some of the sunsets that we'll be getting on September 19th, some of the really cool uh, photos that we're, we look forward to seeing. Yeah, and too, Tim, I was going to say, yeah. you know, sometimes you, you think you have a horrible view of, of a sunset, and then sometimes you have a great view of the sunrise. Oh, yeah. you, know, you forget, I'm not up that early that often because of my shift. <laughs> But when I am, sometimes I forget how beautiful sunrises are at my house because my, my house faces almost due north, and I get just such a great shot of, uh, of sunrise. And uh, So you, you can't, you know, if you have a horrible view of a sunset, sometimes it's because you have a great view of a sunrise. I'll second that. If you ever have the chance to come up to the Seattle area in the summer, we have a 14,000-foot canvas called Mount Rainier, and yeah. it's amazing. <laughs> the sun starts to rise, and... Rainier will be illuminated really from both sides, both at sunrise and sunset, of course. But the sunrise is really amazing. Sometimes I catch it on my way into work when the sun is rising so early, and I'm driving on the floating bridge across uh, I-90 into Seattle, and you know I, I don't want to have a wreck, but I can't help but look back out my driver's side mirror because it is just amazing. The mountain sometimes is on fire when the rest of the landscape is pretty dark. 
it's, yep. it's amazing. And I think sometimes even you get some contrast with clouds or, or something like that. That just really helps it. You know, if you don't give a cloud-free a sunset, maybe it's, it's there's not enough contrast there or depth perception or something. You have a, just a few clouds out there and you can get these bright, you know, pinks or purples even in the sky, you know, and you get that contrast, maybe a little gray underside to the, to the clouds. It's just it's awesome stuff. Uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, Anthony Cantato, who is now Verizon but formerly of NBC. That's sort of one of, I remember his tweets that he said, what a boring day because <laughs> there's no clouds in the sky. I think he's taking a, a capture of, of, of New York City skyline. But sometimes without clouds, you don't get a great, uh, yeah. you know, it's always a beautiful, but it's not as beautiful as it could be if the clouds are, are present. Well, what it definitely it? helps with the sun and everything, you know, with the clouds. It makes each sunset unique, whether you have clouds or the, the topography or it's something in the city. So I, I think it, it just all blends together. You can have a great sunset without clouds, but also a great sunset with clouds. It helps. Maria, I think we got you back. Oh, boy. Okay. Okay. So uh, I think she's, she might be back, but hopefully the volume is working this time. You know, we're talking about... John was talking about the smoke, and, and, and I was going to ask this later, but I'm going to throw this out here, and I, I found it very interesting. And, and there's, of course, there's volcanic eruptions across the globe every, every year, and, but some are more famous than others. And I was wondering if you all can, can think of two famous, I'm thinking of two, two famous volcanic eruptions that kind of, uh, kind of um, really you know, got into our, our nomenclature. We, we, we think about these volcanic eruptions because what it has done two sunsets or what it had done to sunsets during the, the next two to three years. And I think one of them comes right. freshly to mind, but there's another one that you may not get. Anybody want to take a guess? Pinatubo has got to be. I, I remember Pinatubo. I re yeah. yeah, I remember Pinatubo. And matter of fact, I have a screenshot of a Pinatubo sunset that I can pull up here real quick. But it just, it just highlights some of the, uh, the reds and things. Wow. Whoa, that's good. No, we. I think we got it, but uh, it's gorgeous. It's um, yeah, Pinatubo yeah. is definitely the one that I was thinking when that was 1991, and over the next two to three years, um, with with the, the dust and the, and the ash that kind of just crossed the globe, it, it created these unbelievable suns. I think Hawaii was one of the this the, uh, a state that really was was able to, to capture um, was sort of the epicenter of some of these awesome sunsets. And uh, there's another one I'm talking of or thinking of, and that actually, and I'm going to share my screen here. Let's see here. And it's actually, a, I hope I'm saying this right, is it Krakatoa? <clears throat> Does that sound familiar? Oh, or Krakatoa. 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 1883. Yeah. We're going way back. That's way before. <laughs> <laughs> but interestingly enough, if you can read some of that, but basically there's some famous paintings. Of course, one of the is obvious, and that's the scream. Wow. Um, and people think that that background is actually uh, due to the, vo the Krakatoa explode or oh, wow. well, was a volcanic explosion, and it's the reason why this. Um, uh, you know, it, that's colored in those in unbelievable reds and oranges and yellows. So that's just something that, interesting that I, I picked up when I was doing some of the studying here. Yeah, and, and Krakatoa, if, if memory serves, Krakatoa was one of the most powerful volcanic eruptions in the last thousand years, if yeah. not beyond that. Yeah, and the two important things about both of those eruptions were they were close to the uh, uh, equator. Mm -hmm. And you tend to get volcanic eruptions closer to the equator. And when we had sunsets, it was amazing because 
you don't have any obstruction out there. Uh, the little sliver of Fort Myers Beach, you have no obstruction. So even when the clouds are fairly low to the surface, if you're at a beach or someplace uh, like a flat piece of land in Nebraska or somewhere else, you can get incredible illumination from the underside where you might not have that if, if you have a mountain range off to your west. Sorry about that, guys. You guys can hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. I think I hit a button and you I disappeared. went off. I disappeared. <laughs> so, okay, so where do we leave off? This. I'm sorry about that. Well, Tim, I, th I think uh, Morgan brought a good point. You know, some of the, some of the best sunset pictures you get are pictures where you don't even see the sun. And uh, oh. let me just let me just share another one uh, that was just sent over to us about a week ago. Uh, let's see if this works here. Um, oh, this my. is a this was actually what you're seeing here is a shelf cloud, and it looks like it's kind of almost like a bowing structure of a line of thunderstorms that moved through Indianapolis about. It looks like the date stamp was August 31st, so this was just a, you know, this was just a, you know, a short time ago, and uh, yeah, the, the 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 color palette just you know speaks for itself. But to see a little shelf cloud like this and a bowling line of storms come in right at sunset, I mean that was, that that was truly spectacular. That's 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 an cool. unbelievable shot. I yeah, I, I love post storm. Post, you give me a post storm sunset, uh, to, for whatever reason, when you can get that sun angle to undercut. A, a big anvil cloud or some kind of, uh, you know, cumulonimbus cloud. And I'll show you one of my pictures. This is one I took from the station wow. um, uh, looking to the south, and you had this gigantic anvil, and you had the sun setting off to the to the west, which is off to the right in this image. And you just get these beautiful illuminations. And it, Morgan brought the, the Mamatis clouds. We've had some great Mamatis clouds, which, uh, you know, they, they form over you, and the sun angle gets so low in the sky that you'll get redirected light off the bottom of the anvil, and you'll get this weird orangish glow across the region. I remember one night we had that here in Charlotte, and I, the phones were ringing off the hooks. People thought something like chemical had leaked into the air or something because we were getting this great orange glow across the, all of Charlotte. Yeah, and something else about uh, having the, the sun close to the horizon, storm chasers obviously love that because it illuminates cloud features incredibly. Let me see if I can share this. This was a shot now that we're sharing everything real fast. Uh, <laughs> let me go to this and see if you can see this. This is one of the very first storm pictures I took. I was... Wow. Do really, you see that? Oh, tremendous. Yeah, it's a wall cloud just west of Abilene, Texas, where is, and that's where I grew up. And I think I was 15 or 16 and shot this on film, hoping it would come out. And uh, it sure did. And then the sun got a little bit lower in the sky uh, before I finally lost it. And the wall cloud was dying. It never produced a tornado. But you can have some of the most unbelievable shots of severe weather when you have a sunset. The only, let me see if I can get that back. The only bad thing about that, about 30 minutes later, you're not going to be able to see a thing. And that's when storm chasing is a little problematic. Well, speaking of storm chasing, uh, Mike Bettis, any memorable sunsets during any of your chases? Uh, I do actually have one really memorable, and I wish I had the photo for you. Maybe I'll post it on, on Sunset Day. But uh, we were in Iowa chasing, and uh, we kind of had ended our chase at this point, and we're, we're driving back toward the hotel. And no joke, the clouds had formed in such a way that the sun behind it was actually creating a smiley face because there were two holes in the clouds and this little crescent. It literally made a smiley face in the clouds. It was it was pretty awesome. That is cool. That is cool. We have. Um, I did want to touch on some of the cool optics that sunsets can produce, and I was going to throw this question out there. Have you? Have, has any of you seen a cool optic? Uh, you know, phenomena during a sunset, and I'm talking about some of the more famous ones: a sun pillar, a green flash, and then I think we've a lot of us have probably seen anti-crepuscular rays. Right. But uh, any come to mind? Yeah, the sun pillar for me. I, I've seen sun pillars uh, here in El Paso, especially uh, lately. We've had a lot of we had a big, big, several big fires out here, and that throws a lot of. Uh, dust and uh, stuff in the air, and we get a. We also get a lot of cirrus clouds coming over. We don't get, uh, uh, especially during the the summer, we've got a lot of anvil leftover remnants, and you can get uh, with that the ice crystals in the air. That's when you get those those sun pillars. Is they, it just looks like a, a pillar right off the top of the sun, uh, right as the sun hits the horizon. There's this 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 line of bright red light standing right on top, makes it look like a, a giant exclamation point. So, yeah, the the sun pillar is amazing. 
I this think is, you got an image there. Yep. Go ahead and say something. Now, this is one image that I found. This is probably not the best image, but it's it kind of speaks for itself. And uh, speaking of some pillars, and this is as I was, again more studying by Tim because I had to really do some catch up here. But when it comes to some pillars, is it? It says um, you know that ice crystals are there, and it, that's what's happening. It's sort of this this last sort of exhale of the sun. Right. Sends up this this light from you know this northern trajectory, and it's it's reflecting off the ice crystals. And I guess my question is, is does it have to be a cold environment at the surface, or is that just the ice crystals that are up in in altitude? I, I'm pretty sure it's just the ice crystals off the surface, because I, if memory serves, I've seen it here during the summer in El Paso, and we don't have cool summers. No, no. <laughs> Um, yeah, you, it it depends on the the ice crystals in the upper part of the atmosphere. Gotcha. I All think right. it's more. I think it works better. I've seen some great um, uh, images of that. They're they're called light pillars or fog pillars, and you can see uh, those in the northern climates uh, in 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 places like in Canada when they have a cold air mass uh, like a fog just off the deck. You get these pillars of all the lights in the city. It looks pretty spectacular. That's. I, I, I couldn't even imagine. I, I, I'd love to get there into uh, into uh, into the southwest and just see some of the beautiful sunsets out there. Anybody well, else see any? I've uh, got the sunsets going on over my shoulder. Those are uh, all the, the sunsets we take here at the office on my <laughs> screen. I see it. Very cool. I saw a green flash once on Lake Erie. Wow. Uh, very. It was. It's just one of those weird things. You're looking. At, we were at a cabin um, on the lake and just happened to look out and see it right at sunset. We were watching the sun go down and. Uh, we were on the eastern end of the lake, obviously looking back towards the west end, and saw a green flash. And it was just one of those things where, like, I don't think anybody with me knew what it was, and I was super geeked out about it. <laughs> they were all like, "What's the big deal?" I said, "You don't know how rare that is that we just saw that." How long so, did like, it last? Not very long. I mean, right. it's like if just you're seconds. not looking, right. it's like at that last second. I mean, mm -hmm. it's almost one of those things like you see, and you're like, "Did I just see what I think I right. just saw?" <laughs> Your eyes have to be playing tricks on you. Uh, yeah. You're staring. I mean, you're staring at the sun. You know. <laughs> That's why I'm always amazed when you get a picture of it because the timing and everything just has to be, perfect. you know, absolutely picture perfect to get yeah. a picture right. like that. Here's a here's a I, I on Pinterest I have a, a board of atmospheric optics and this was a picture that uh, I found on the internet and wow. basically you you need um. It's almost the, the you get that um, the mirage effect, which you get that layering of the atmosphere in combination uh, with the sun hitting the horizon. So you can see the stacked effect there of the sun, and then right as it sets, you get that that green flash that pops up there just for a second or two. So you got to be looking at, like you said, <laughs> to get it in film, you got to be uh, or, you know on your camera, you got to be uh, at the right place at the right time. That's for sure. Wow. That is, and just again, I'm reading up on this, and I, I just noticed that you know when you t think about the the spectrum of colors on the visible uh, scale, it, you know this is kind of I'm trying to read. I read it over and over again, and I'm not sure even of why I get you know what exactly goes on here with the green flash, but it seems like it's this last sort of you know, and I said it before, this exhale of, of light at the horizon, and the the yellows and oranges are 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 pushed out and 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 but the blues and the purples have sh such short wavelength that they're they easily escape but sort of what in the middle is the green is the green spectrum and that sort of is why it's the green flash I, don't know, I didn't explain that very well but no but I, I, I think that's exact you, you nailed it exactly it's okay. all the the reds and oranges are at the very last sense that the reds and oranges are gone the blues already been scattered so what you're left with is just the green yeah, it's and that's why it's rare. Yeah. <laughs> and folks, if you can get that at home and you can capture it, that's awesome. And, and be you know, please be sure to to upload that during sunset day. Um, I guess we've already touched on uh, some of our favorite sunsets, but let's kind of combine the two topics of of favorite sunsets and also, and I think we've already touched this on already, but maybe sort of the landscapes that you are driven to when it comes to where you want to see your your favorite sunsets or you know. If you can talk about maybe your favorite sunset, but also what made it memorable and what type of landscape you are in. Um, I'll start since I'm over here on the on the, all the way on the end. Um, <laughs> for me, I, I I've got two that I really like. I mean, the beach is great, but I really I'm probably going to be in Tim's camp on this as far as the mountains. I really love the the mountain um, sunrise and sunsets, uh, especially sunsets because. Um, oftentimes when I'm shooting, you know, I'm an amateur photographer, I like to take pictures of a lot of stuff, I'm shooting the sky, I'm not really focused on the, on the topography of the land, unless you're in the mountains, because you have these, you know, these giant masses of land sticking up out of the, 
out of the ground, and especially here in western North Carolina, when you get a sunset, oftentimes uh, the whole side, the western, northwestern side, sometimes southwestern side, depending on the time of year, um, gets illuminated by the sun, and you can end up with just some incredible images because the ground is actually being lit, um, and it's not as dark as it normally is when I'm, you know, trying to shoot the sky and really have, you know, the ex I don't want to overexpose the ground unless I'm doing an HDR image of some kind. Um, so you end up with these just beautiful shots of the ground. And, one of the things I've tried recently, last couple of years, and I really love to do, is these time lapses of sunrise and sunsets. Mm -hmm. And they are incredibly difficult to do because of the changing exposures. Um, and luckily, with some great software from Magic Lantern, I can hack my, my Canon camera now to adjust my exposure as the sun goes down, which really helps. And oh, to wow. me, some of my favorite sunsets are actually time lapses because it's cool to see the transition from bright sun to below the horizon in about 10 seconds, which would have taken like two hours. <laughs> now, Brad, I uh, never claim to be a photographer myself, <laughs> but uh, I, I do have a couple GoPros, and GoPros are very easy for shooting uh, oh, yeah. great time-lapse images and even sunsets because they, I, I, I don't know what the optics of the camera are, but they, they do handle the colors very well. Yeah. And uh, I have shot a few myself, and, and it is great to be able to see those, those changing colors, the changing clouds as they move across the sky, just awesome stuff. Uh, my favorite sunset that I've ever seen was uh, Manhattan Henge. Um, oh. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that, but uh, I think it's uh, twice to maybe four times a year. Um, the, the grid of lower Manhattan is set up in a way where the sun sets between uh, the east-west running streets. So you'll get lines of people lining up all across the streets, and, and they're just waiting for the sun to come between two buildings so they can snap that picture, and you see the beautiful... A globe uh, of the sun, beautiful disk of the sun, just slowly moving its way through the buildings. And uh, I, I happened to see it by happenstance, and uh, I've always wanted to go back, and I didn't have any cameras or anything to take a picture with. It, it was before cell phone cameras were around that I saw it. But uh, that's definitely my favorite sunset. Yeah, Jacob, I'm showing them right now. Hopefully um, the screen share is working. It looks like it is. Yep. It's just it's remarkable. It's, it's just a remarkable wow. sunset. But, um, John, how about you? Well, uh, I'm pretty partial to the desert southwest. Uh, any, any sunsets out there? In fact, there was one, um, you know, I took, a, I took a trip in college to the Grand Canyon in March, and they had just gotten six inches of snow at the south rim. <clears throat> and then the following night, there was a sunset after that, just illuminating the canyon with fresh snow cover on top of it with just this multicolor palette. It was just, of course, I... Don't have a picture on my computer now. That would be to <laughs> that, of course. Uh, but uh, you know, so there's, so again, desert sunsets are my favorite. My other favorite are generally sunsets in, um, you know, notable sunsets in notable times of year, particularly Barrow, Alaska's last, you know, for a while. You know, right. just, um, you know, the first sunrise in Barrow after after a long, you know, after a long period where in which they did not see a sunrise. You know, those types of things. You know, just. Obviously, the, the the actual sunrise or sunset doesn't look all that spectacular, but just in the context of where it's occurring and when it's occurring, that's that's always fascinating to me. So it's like those solstice ones. I love the solstice sunrise sunsets. Oh, Any time yeah. you get into that time of year, you see a lot of Stonehenge uh, at that time, yeah. especially uh, the winter solstice, I guess. Uh, Morgan, yeah, I have a couple here that I, I'm sharing. Hopefully, you can see my screen right now. And this one's from Discovery Park in Seattle, and looking back toward Mount Rainier, there are some better shots, and occasionally, you will, in my mind's eye, of Mount Rainier, <laughs> off in the distance. I caught this about a month ago. Uh, just amazing how Mount Rainier rises above the city. This is not the best screenshot in the world, but this was from our tower cam. I wish I captured this in HD. I did not, but wow. you see Mount sure. Rainier in the distance and casting a shadow at sunrise That's amazing. at the top of the mountain. And that happens quite a bit. If you search on Google for Mount yeah. Rainier shadow, there are some spectacular images, especially from south of Seattle. I have two more to share real fast. This I shot back in... April, and this wow. is looking from I-5 north of Seattle in, I think I was in Skagit or Snohomish County at the time, coming back from the Tulip wow. Festival at Mount Vernon, which is another place to go if you ever have the chance, just gorgeous, <laughs> looking back toward the Cascades as a dying rain shower was falling, and you see a sun, uh, a rainbow right there at sunset, and this, uh, I, I do miss Florida sometimes, I, <laughs> I have a soft spot for Florida in my heart, and this was uh, the... Uh, 
island over there underneath the sun is Sanibel Island, and just a beautiful, beautiful place to visit. But those are some. I put a few more of my pictures right there on uh, morganpalmer.tv slash sunset. I link, link to uh, to an album. They they that, that they were awesome, Morgan. No, thank you. thank you. <laughs> Tim Bryce. You bet. Uh, well, again, back to the Southwest. Uh, Again, you know, I, I work shift work, so you know we're working all kinds of shifts. So we get to be outside and taking observations in the morning for sunrise and at sunset. So um, it's not uncommon for me to be going out and seeing just spectacular sunsets here in the Great Southwest. So this is one that we had just outside of our door uh, at the weather office. Here's another one. You can see we we actually are on a main line of the uh, Union Pacific, so we see <laughs> trains going by all the time. And then on my uh, on my Pinterest, I had one shot that I, I've, going back to what Jonathan has said. Can't see it real well, but um, this is a sunrise and a sunset at the same moment. This is the I think this is somewhere in Norway where the sun reached its lowest point on the horizon and would be heading back up right now. So oh, wow. I thought that was kind of yeah. that was kind of neat. That's awesome. That is a great shot. Um. Thank you all for sharing. Uh, Jacob, did you want to share any, or did I mean I know you got the Manhattan Edge, or um, well, let's see. It's up. No, it's up to you. I'm just throwing <laughs> it out. I do actually there. have a few up. Let me uh, go ahead and pull this up. Okay. So one of the things I uh, have the benefit of of is the Weatherbug Camera Network. Uh, we get great camera shots from across the country. Uh, this is one from Orange Beach, Alabama. Uh, this was on January third, so. Uh, beautiful shot there. Can you guys see it, by the way? Oh, yeah. That's okay. Uh, this was actually the day of Newtown, um, obviously a very tragic day. I thought this was very fitting. Ridgefield, Connecticut is is only uh, a 10-mile drive or so from New, Newtown, and uh, this is the sunset that greeted them uh, with the American flag there, beautiful colors. So it was uh, kind of poignant to, to share that. And another guy that's really great at shooting South Florida uh, sunsets is Jeff Gammons. Yes. Uh, he's Storm Visuals on uh, Twitter. A must follow. Uh, this is one of his shots. Yeah, he's definitely a must Doesn't follow. Doesn't he have enough publicity already? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right? But uh, he, he's fantastic, and this is just one of his shots. This was from uh, from New Year's. This was the final South Florida sunset of 2012. So yeah. those are just a few that uh, came to mind that I thought I'd share. Oh, they're great. Thank you for sharing. We do have one question here, and honestly, I... I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to answer this, but I'm going to throw it out there and see what happens. Why does the, This is from Timothy Shaw. Why does the sun seem to set faster as it approaches sunset? Obviously, the Earth's rotation isn't changing speed. What is behind the optical illusion? I think it, it has to do with why, is, why does the moon seem bigger, the full moon seem bigger near the horizon? It's simply because you have something to relate it to. That because you can see the sun as it's setting next to the ground, you can see it actually moving. Whereas when it's way up high, uh, it, it's harder to judge what the speed is because you just have nothing to uh, to relate it to. Gotcha, gotcha. So it's all about that uh, the human and how it perceives things uh, at yes. the horizon. Interesting. Very cool. So I think you know there are a lot of topics that I wanted to cover, and we 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 got through what I really. Anybody want to bring up any any last uh, topics or? There is one thing that uh, perhaps Tim can shed a little bit more light on. I do remember studying many years ago, and it, and it surprised me. You have a bit of refraction in the atmosphere where you have a, a bit of bending of the light. Correct. And so you will actually see the top of the sun off in the distance on the horizon before the sun actually gets above the horizon. That's right. Because of it's bending actually, of the light rays. From what, I, from what I was reading, and when you actually see the sun set, it has already set. It's already below the horizon, but with the refraction of the light, it actually bends those sun rays around the curvature, and you can actually you're actually seeing it a little uh, later than the actual sunset that actually happened. It's a bit of a mind blowing fact. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. When you when you see the sunset, oh, it's already set. So it's already set. <laughs> believe me, not your lying eyes. <laughs> yeah. So the, what do uh, you guys think about uh, Instagram? Like, has that kind of ruined sunset pictures? It can. <laughs> It can with all the filters and everything. I don't mind a good contrast change or you know changing the colors a little bit, but filters, yay or nay? You know, I, I I'm a purist, so I I, I want to see what what is you know actually out there. But I, I will say this for interest, Instagram, it 
it's given people a platform yeah. to publish. So, you know, we yeah. see a lot more sunsets than we might have seen otherwise. And, you know, yeah, a lot of them are filtered, but I, you know, I think Instagram just gives people a lot more opportunity to share. Yeah, as long as, long as somebody tells you, hey, it's, it's been filtered and you kind of know what it is, I think, I think it's okay. I mean, I, I'm a purist too, but I, I mean, I use filters sometimes just because for, for artistic effect, but as long as it's a, a, a great shot and they let you know what filter they use, I'm not, a, you know, I'm not opposed to it. But oftentimes, I mean, it, Mother Nature has its own filters, you know, really. Right. Sometimes you just let, let it speak for itself, and, and those are the best shots to me, which are just, you catch something that, you know, is for a moment in time just looks spectacular, um, and you really just, you're in awe of what Mother Nature can do. It really, one of the things about our jobs that I think is so cool is that we have this great appreciation for what nature has, and uh, sometimes as a meteorologist, you forget the greatest thing to do is just look at the sky. I mean, it really is one of the coolest things uh, to have an appreciation for, and I know as a kid, that's what probably set me apart from a lot of my friends was they just kept walking, I just kept staring at the sky sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> they thought you were goofy. Yeah. <laughs> they don't now, but <laughs> they did then. <laughs> right. I'm not a, uh, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not an amateur, not even an amateur photographer, but, you know, there's been, there's been polarization filters on cameras forever, uh, so, you know, it's, it's kind of incumbent on all of us to be filters, if you will, we kind of know when a picture looks filtered, when it doesn't have the hashtag, no filter, <laughs> yeah. uh, so, but, uh, but that's how it goes. I was going to say before, you know, before we get out of here, I, I, I did want to share my time lapse since I talked about it, but oh, then yeah. I'll really share it. Um, and the cool thing about time lapses, if you don't do time lapses uh, the way like uh, Jacob and I were talking about, these are actually individual stills that are then made into basically a, a 30 frame per second slideshow. So it's not just like shooting a, a, a video and speeding it up because that's actually, that quality isn't very good. These are individual 18 megapixel uh, or, or higher raw images that I um, have put into a sequence. So this was a shot, this was the last sunset of November uh, last year, and you could see briefly there we had a little, um, a little sun dog for a second. But there weren't a lot of clouds here, but the cirrus clouds coming across the sky. And the cool thing about this sunset is, is the transition from blue at the top of your screen to the yeah. reds, which mm -hmm. really illustrates mm -hmm. what's going on in the atmosphere. Oh, yeah. At the top exactly. of the screen, you weren't filtering as much of the atmosphere as you were lower. And then this is after sunset. You guys were talking about this. How much more twilight you get even after. Uh, the sun has gone down, so uh, especially like a shot like here, let me stop it in the middle. Um, we'll stop it at a good spot here so you can kind of see. But I think that you get a good illustration of what's going on when you see the reds at the bottom and the blues at the top. A lot of those optics we talked about are going on right there as the sun's going through more of the atmosphere at the bottom of the screen and less towards the top. That's a, that's a, okay, that pretty much is our Hang out in a nutshell. <laughs> we should just start it with off of that and just right. hang up I, the mic. I have, I have another image here I, I want to show real fast, and this is a shout out to a website called skunkbayweather.com. Funny name, amazing I've seen photography. That. I was yeah. just looking at that the other day. Yeah, it's on the northern tip of the Kitsap Peninsula, which, if you look, yep. if you know where Puget Sound is, it's across, essentially across from Seattle west of Seattle on the northern tip of that county and looking back to the north and wow. northeast he actually has two cameras toward Whidbey Island and eventually off in the distance if visibility is good Mount Baker and he has on his website skunkbayweather.com he has time lapses current time lapses current images and oh wow I had the opportunity to meet him at a weather symposium in Seattle and he is a weather <laughs> aficionado weather nut perhaps you can say <laughs> I mean like all of us are and he also wow. pairs it up with incredible images. So that's a shout that out to a website. Morgan, Sorry? Is that an automated camera? Yes, it's an automated camera. Yeah. To snap and that great of a shot from an automated mm -hmm. camera is pretty impressive. And he has two side by sides, so you almost have a stereoscopic image. He has a and he'll stitch them together sometimes into a panorama. Wow. He has one that's shooting awesome. north and then one shooting northeast, and they are he sorry, I put my hands in front of my face. Perfectly <laughs> put them together to get a panorama and stitch it. He stitches it together sometimes and uh, allows us to use that on the air and that's on one of our more popular cameras. Definitely. Hey, uh, Tim, there's one thing, one atmospheric phenomenon we didn't talk about yeah. and that was with the, the you said the antipuscular coarse specular rays. Yeah. And um, I got, uh, again, from my Pinterest thing, let me jump over here real quick. 
Um, one of the interesting things that I was reading about uh, corpuscular rays was uh, it looks like the from the sun from our perspective, like the rays are all kind of spreading out. But yeah. from from what I was reading is that these uh, the sun rays here are all parallel. If you could look at them from above, you could see that they all move in the same direction. And it's just from our perspective, uh, as the sun shines through the clouds, that you end up with that kind of spreading out effect. But I, I thought that was kind of you know the the sun so far away that the rays are all coming straight, and as it passes through that cloud. It's still passing straight, but our eyes perceive it yep. uh, as, as spreading out, kind of neat. What comes to mind is that famous uh, railroad tracks um, yes, you know, that's perspective. Exactly, yeah, that's exactly the, the same effect. And I think we read the same thing last night. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just anti corpuscular rays, I think, are just a, a, an awesome thing. Let me share my screen. I, again, this is just a Google uh, Google search of anti corpuscular, and you get the idea. And they're just an awesome. and. It's all sort of, most of the time, these rays are pointing to the opposite side of where the sun is setting. So it's sort of the 180, uh, 180 degrees opposite of, of the sun. And they all seem to be pointing to a certain spot. But in reality, like Tim was saying, it's just, they're all parallel rays. It's just, again, how the human perceives it. Just another awesome feature that we hope some of you will, will capture during this uh, sunset day experiment. I think, yeah. Go ahead. Hey, well, Tim, I'm, oh, go ahead. Well, John, uh, Tim, I, I wanted to point out that um, after our hangout, you guys are going to have another hangout yep. with uh, professional photographers. Yes. To get and, some photography tips. Yeah, and I'm going to, I was going to mention that at the very end. I'll mention it right now. We are having an awesome photographers, photographers, by the way, that are very active in the Google Plus community. And that is going to be on 4 p.m. on Thursday. That's 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 Pacific, 1 Pacific. And we have Nicole Young, Karen Hutton, Thomas Hawk, and I think a lot of people know this guy. His, his name is Trey Ratcliffe, <laughs> and he is the moderator of that one. I'll be on there as sort of just a, a, you know, a, a sort of a, a sub-moderator, but he's going to be the main guy that's going to draw the co or drive the conversation. And I think you all are going to um, really enjoy that hangout. That is again. It's 4 p.m. this Thursday. 4 p.m. Eastern this Thursday. 1 p.m. Pacific. Yeah. All of us. Hey, all of us wish we were that yeah. good to be on that <laughs> hangout. <laughs> I was going to say, Tim. I, I, I'm, I'm, I can't wait for that to learn some tips uh, about photography because I'm total amateur. But I'm curious if we, go down, if we can go down the line here. And what are you guys shooting on? I, I shoot on a Canon T3i. And my iPhone and my my Hero 3 are typically my my three. Uh, tools of choice. I'm curious if we go down the line what you guys shoot with equipment wise. I have the GoPro 3 as well and I have a D3000. Um, I don't admittedly use that very much just because uh, it's it's bigger than my GoPro 3. So. <laughs> the best camera is the camera you have with you. I've always heard that from a good exactly. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's very true. I mean I, I I'm even one step below you all I'm sure. I, I just It's basically my smartphone and yep. a Canon power shot, you know, point it, click it, go. That's, That's all you need this, this, this yep. all I need. Yeah, I've got the D3000 also, the Nikon, and you know, it's it's a good it's a good camera uh, for someone if if you want to get in sort of at the entry level of SLRs or digital SLRs. It's not incredibly expensive. I don't use that nearly as much as I used to, and now I use my iPhone and I have a GoPro as well. That's an incredible little camera. Um, but in this day and age, so many people are are shooting with their smartphones, and those lenses and imagers are only going to get better and better. Yep. Yep. Uh, I, if, if I were in the professional photography market, I mean, especially for the larger cameras, you know, I'd be paying very close attention to what the phone makers are doing because some people are putting out some great images on their phones. Yeah, and, and I follow with Jonathan. I, I, I just have a smartphone, so I could do you know, like like Brad said, whatever camera you have, and that's the only camera I usually have with me to take a, take a quick, good yeah. picture. And, it, you know, it's the optics, but it's also the chips and the, the software. They're getting more and fancy with these phones and the software and the chipsets behind them that help you. They'll also help you make better uh, pictures. Yeah, it's funny. I, I look at smartphones now based on what camera they have. <laughs> That's really my, That's, one of my deciding yeah. choices now. Oh, yeah. It really is. <laughs> uh, here's, here's one image from Tim's Neck of the Woods. I shot this probably 15 years ago. Uh, this is actually in New Mexico in the Jornada yeah. del Muerto. Ooh, um, know it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the drive from Carrizoza, New Mexico, over to I think Socorro, and just happened to capture. There was a thunderstorm off to my uh, oh it's, uh, north, or I can't remember northeast, I think, and I managed to capture 
the image, and it just lit up that old abandoned house just perfectly. Yeah, the Hornada de Muerto. That's uh, the journey of death, and that's uh, <laughs> it's basically where the uh, when make the, you uh, book your trip now. You're saying yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's when it's, the Spaniards were traveling up on the Royal Road up from uh, Mexico City to to Santa Fe. They had to drift away from the Rio Grande, and so. They, that was their source of water, and you're walking in the middle of the desert. And I've been out there, and you're, it is some forsaken yeah. land out there. So, but can be starkly uh, beautiful. Definitely. Right. Its own type of beauty. I wouldn't want to break down without sun <laughs> <laughs> at night. And just real quick, getting back to uh, the the camera. Um, I, I, if we all watched, uh, we probably watched our college football and NFL this Saturday and Sunday. There's this this commercial that was kept on showing, which is and I don't want to provide <laughs> product sponsorship, but I think it, the, the megapixels was up to, I don't know, was it 41, is it? Is it a Nokia? Yeah, or, yeah it's a Nokia Illumina. Windows yeah. phone. That's they just, just rolled it out. That just blows my mind. I mean, I'm, I'm, <laughs> how do they, I can't believe that it's gotten to that stage already for not only a DSLR, but also this, we're, now we're talking smartphones with a, with a yeah, just a the, m- the- the new Sony Z1 is going to have lens mm-hmm. attachments that could be attached to the camera or to the phone itself that are as good yeah. as a DSLR. So it, it, they really are. It's amazing. That that's along with those attachments. <laughs> there's also um there's also uh, these 360 and I get this gets me beyond uh you know just your classic take a snapshot. But there's these 360 attachments where you can take yeah. video um, of of uh just this you know, your surroundings. And it actually captures it as a video, and I think that's just some really cool attachments that are coming along the way too. Um, so I think that is we we've covered a whole bunch of stuff. I'm so guys, thank you so much for joining us. I know that Maria and and Mike had to drop out. They have some meetings that they attend to at the Weather Channel, but we thank them as well. And guys, one more time, I just uh, want to provide give you an opportunity to provide you know uh, some of your social handles before we leave. Um, you can always find me. Just search WX Brad. It'll come up with most of my uh, my Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, my blog. Um, that's the easiest way to search, or just search my name. Uh, you, you, Google search will find me, no problem. Yep. <laughs> Jacob. Yeah, you'll be able to find me. Uh, forecast for you, uh, the number fours. Uh, don't spell it out. You won't find me. <laughs> uh, and then you can also find me by searching Jacob Wyckoff on Facebook and Google Plus. Very cool, John. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at WXJ Erdman. I'm also on Google Plus. Just search my name, Jonathan Erdman, and uh, you know, just go to weather.com and search there too as well. John is a great, great meteorologist, a superb meteorologist, and he writes also, of course, for weather.com some great, great weather articles um, on the site. So thanks, John. Morgan. Yeah, uh, Morgan Palmer on Twitter, and if you just to put me into Google, you'll find me. I do have some social media links, Instagram links, my Flickr album at morganpalmer.tv. It also has some links to uh, my blogs, both a station blog and a personal page. Very cool. And Tim, we got the or about me. I already, I think, memorized it already. Yeah, about me dot or about about dot me slash Tim Bryce, or you can find me on Twitter, Tim Bryce one seven. I think that's what's becoming a sort of the go-to thing. It's just kind of like, okay, here's everything. Just take it. <laughs> it, it, it would take forever for me to rattle them all, rattle them all off. Um, but no, thank you all. You, you brought so much knowledge to this hangout, and uh, I appreciate you sharing some of your your photos and and some of the the memories that got, went along with it. And um, and I, you know, I didn't think we we're going to go an hour, but look what we did. We just went, you know, <laughs> two minutes to noon here. Um, we got one more time a mention of the hangout on air coming up this Thursday at 4 p.m. Again, that's with uh, some awesome photographers that are very active on Google Plus. They have a lot of people in their circle, or is it vice versa? Um, Nicole S. Young, Karen Hutton, Thomas Hawk, and moderator Trey Ratcliffe, as many people know. All right, all. Thank you so much for joining us. Again, sunset day is September 19th. And uh, we just w- look forward to your, your photos that you're going to upload. Right now, that, that event is closed off from uploading. But on the 19th at midnight, we're going to open it up. And we hope the fire hose is, is, is you know, unleashed on us. And we get tons <laughs> and tons of great, great sunsets from mountain landscapes to cityscapes and to beach landscapes. And maybe perhaps some of these optics that we talked about, these optical phenomena, such as the pillar, the flash, the green flash, and the anti-crepuscular rays. All right, guys, thank you all so much. And we're going to save this YouTube, this um, this Google Hangout on air, and we'll post it not only, well, probably you'll find it on the Weather Channel YouTube page. So that's where you'll find it. All right, we'll see you on Thursday. Thank you all. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Tim. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.